Good morning and welcome to Stock Market Today. It is Thursday, September 19th, 2019. I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to ChaikinAnalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email to follow along with this show, as well as get daily stock ideas for you to consider in your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities were mixed in Wednesday's trading, finishing near the best levels of the day following the Fed's policy announcement. Treasuries were mixed with the curve flattening. The dollar was stronger on the major crosses. Gold finished up 20 basis points. WTI crude settled down 2.1%. Uh, As we get to the desk this morning, S&P futures are down 20 basis points after ending near the best levels of the day yesterday. Asia was mixed overnight. European markets are trading higher here this morning. Treasuries are mostly weaker with the curve continuing to flatten. The dollar is weaker versus the yen and euro. Gold is down 70 basis points and WTI crude is getting a little back here, up 1.5%. As we look at the market action here, S&P moves higher on the heels of that Fed rate cut. You can see they tried to push them lower, but the bulls were having none of it. Took the market back up to close them near the highs of the day and that helped chicken money flow move higher. Support remains in the 2900 to 2950 zone that we've been highlighting. RSI still continuing to move higher with price. So from an indicator standpoint, the indicators are continuing to improve. RSI is continuing to move higher. Shake and money flow is moving higher. You actually have a small breakout here if we wanted to draw the if we wanted to draw a resistance line, we have a small breakout in shake and money flow. So really what we're looking for is the RSI to continue to move higher. Should price continue to move higher? And should price pull back to test the 2950, 2900 zone there as it did a few days ago? We want RSI to hold within bullish ranges. So, so far, so good from an indicator standpoint. Resistance, we're there, right? We've been struggling with this 3,000 level. As I said, futures are down a little bit this morning. So between here, 3,000 call it, and the July highs, that's a bit of a resistance zone for the time being. Um, but when we look at the weight of the evidence, and we'll look at breath a little bit later in the show, as we do every Thursday, we can see that breath metrics remain constructive. So... Let's continue to stay the course, focus on the leading areas of the market, focus on the bullish and very bullish stocks within those areas when they become oversold. So the Federal Reserve cuts rates as expected. This is what we're chatting about in our market note today. But the odds of future rate cuts have certainly been reduced. Some of the analyst commentary in and around uh, the policy meeting and the press conference yesterday was to take away that odds of future cuts are likely lower than they were heading into the meeting. Stocks and treasuries turned in a mixed session, as we said. Breath metrics remain constructive, and futures do point to a slightly lower open here today. Take a look at the power bars now for the major indices. The Dow up 15 basis points yesterday, but still skewed bearish. Four bearish stocks, three bullish stocks. And the Dow, S&P, ekes out a slight gain of six basis points on the day, 127 bulls to 78 bears. NASDAQ slight underperformer, 25 bulls to 19 bears. Small caps reverting back to their trend after that reprieve last week, reverting back to a trend of underperformance. 653 bulls, 290 bears there. So the power bar ratio looks good for small caps, but the relative strength uh, is beginning to wane once again. Bonds had a good day, up 42 basis points, sending yields lower. According to the Chaikin power bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. The major indexes across the board, however, are mixed. Let's take a look at our stock of the day now, JD.com. This is an ADR, an American Depository Receipt, meaning it's a foreign company listed here in the U.S. Closed at 34, spot 04 yesterday, down 42 basis points. JD has a very bullish shake in power gauge rating due to attractive financial metrics, strong earnings performance, strong price volume activity, and positive expert activity. So the 20 factors that make up the power gauge, five in each of these four categories come out very bullish. Strong stock trend, strong industry group, type of name we wanna consider. However, we wanna run through and make sure the timing is right. And it's a very bullish stock, it's outperforming the market, so we're starting to check the boxes. Unfortunately, here we are oversold, overbought. Our chicken overbought, oversold indicator is an overbought level, and I don't like this money flow here. Big decline in money flow as the stock trades towards the top of the range. That bothers me, right? 
when a stock is trading near the high end of the range or a 52 week high or a six month high, some sort of important level towards the highs and shaken money flow is bearish, that's a bit of a warning sign. I don't necessarily like stepping in front of that. If I was long JD, I'd probably think about risk managing that position a bit because the money flow near the highs, negative money flow near the highs uh, is a potential warning sign. Now the stock is above a rising long-term trend line. So it's not all bad here. I'd like to see money flow improve uh, and I'd love to see the stock become oversold. So we'll add JD to a bullish watch list today, right? Remember these stocks are auto generated by an algorithm and I'm just running through the analysis for you as if somebody came to me and said, Hey, Dan, what do you think of JD? This is the analysis that I would run through uh, with you if you brought me that question. It's okay, but I'm not in love with that money flow. If I was long, I'd be thinking about risk managing. And if I was thinking about a position here, I would be waiting. Taking a look at the sector tracker now, movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Energy remains at the top of the list despite pulling back with crude over the past couple of days. Real estate moves to the number two slot as rates have come in a bit. You know, a lot of talk about the shift out of defensive areas of the market and into the more cyclical areas of the market. It did play out a little bit last week, but real estate from a trend perspective still looks good. Utilities from a trend perspective still looks good. So you just have to keep that in mind. Financials, we're going to take a look at those a little bit later in this show because they are starting to show signs of life. Materials and industrials round out the sectors that are positive over the last five days. Tech, healthcare, and comms, middle of the road, staples and discretionary at the bottom of the list. Now, speaking of real estate, let's take a look at the Dow Jones REIT Services Industry Group, which over the past six months has been a slight underperformer, lagging the S&P 500 by 1.88%. However, that power bar ratio measures future potential is very strong. 29 bullish or very bullish stocks for only two bearish or very bearish stocks. And it's currently ranked number five of 21 subsectors, having moved up two slots over the past week. So some of the names in there that have very bullish ratings, Core Point Lodge, CPLG, CBL and Associates, CBL, and Sunstone Hotel, SHO, all have very bullish shake and power gauge ratings. So those are stocks that you might want to run through and do the analysis, right? Are they outperforming? Shake and money flow there, right? The analysis that we run through every day. These are names where you could potentially look for ideas. Taking a look at the reads, though, here's what I'm talking about from a trend perspective. RWR, the ETF that we're looking at to measure real estate performance, has a bullish ETF power gauge rating. And it's in a strong trend above a rising long term trend line. You know, relative performance has waned a bit of late, but uh, Still more good than bad there. Check and money flow, solidly bullish. Stock's middle of the zone on the overbought, oversold indicator. The fund, rather, is in the middle of the zone on the overbought, oversold indicator. But from a trend perspective, real estate still looks okay to me, despite the calls that everybody was rotating out of the REITs. And utilities look much the same as well. I mean, these funds are on the cusp of new all-time highs. These are uptrends, folks. You don't, the trend is your friend until the end when it bends. RWR is still in an uptrend. Let's take a look at what's trending now from an individual stock perspective. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Clack, KLA, positive investor day takeaways, send that stock higher up by 3.5%. CME, some positive comments about FDIC, sent that stock higher, CMA rather by 2.2%. Silicon Valley Bank didn't see any real news there to the drive that stock higher by 2%. Lennar up 2% despite catching a downgrade yesterday and PPG is uh, bidding on um, a business line that sent that stock higher by 1.9%. On the loser side of the board, FedEx cut guidance and that disappointed the street, stock down nearly 13%. Alexion made the announcement that their CFO is leaving, not usually uh, something that's received well by investors, and it wasn't here today, down 4.5%. Noble, down with oil. NBL, down 3.4% as oil faded. FLR, didn't see any real news there to send that stock lower by 3.30%. And Densply, X-Ray, X-R-A-Y, uh, down 3% on the day. But again, I didn't see any real news to drive the trading in that stock on the day, you know, we're kind of in a dearth of a new cycle here, right? Uh, getting towards the tail end of the third quarter, right? We'll get into earnings season in a few weeks, but they're not quite there yet. So a bit of a news vacuum when it comes to company specific news. Um, but, you know, 
still monitoring the data points and the trends out there for you. So let's take a look at what we're talking about in our note today to check in analytics clients. Breath metrics continue to improve. Every Thursday, we look at the breath dynamics in the marketplace to get a sense for the odds of the S&P 500 continuing to rise or if there are some warning signs out there. And now breath metrics remain constructive. The advanced decline line still trading near all-time highs. Now, we've talked about this one quite a bit. Remember, throughout August, we kept saying that odds are that we were going to break to the top side of the range. And a big driver of that was the fact that breath never really broke down. The advanced decline line never broke down below its May highs the way the index did. And then it broke out ahead of the index, breaking higher about a week later. So still healthy participation uh, at the stock level within the upside movement in the market, if you will. Let's look at the percentage of stocks above their respective 200-day moving averages. Still a healthy majority, right? We generally like to use 60% as the cutoff to tell us that a healthy majority of stocks are trading above their long-term 200-day moving averages. We're at 73% right now. How about intermediate term? Percentage of stocks trading above their 50-day moving averages sitting at around 76%. So breath is constructive. Participation in the rally, long-term trends in track, intermediate terms trends intact, um, increases the odds that the index will ultimately break through those July highs before the end of the year. It's an odds game, right? We're assessing the odds of that likelihood every day, and these are some of the data points we look at to help us make that assessment, and they are pointing in the bullish direction. Now, one of the themes that we've liked and continue to like is low vol or minimum volatility names. We're taking a look here at the USMV, the iShares Edge MSCI Minimum Volatility ETF. And you can see that it remains a leading theme here. From an absolute basis, fund is in a solid uptrend. It went into a bit of a consolidation and then broke topside from that consolidation and is holding above the consolidation level, above a rising 200-day moving average, while the RSI while slightly neutral, is holding within bullish ranges. So momentum is there, right? Actually did not become oversold on this dip lower in August and is now broken back above the 50 and holding above that 50 mark uh, as the fund breaks topside of that consolidation on a relative basis. Uh, USMV holding above a key support level and beginning to move higher. So minimum vol or low vol remains a theme. You know, you can drill down and look at the holdings within an ETF like USMV and look for those stocks that are bullish or very bullish, that are outperforming the market, positive shake and money flow, right? All the metrics that we always talk about here every day. That is how you find leading stock ideas within leading themes within the marketplace. Small caps are fading from resistance, right? So everyone was getting excited. Small caps were beginning to outperform the market a bit, right? You can see they had a solid run. There's been some good support around the 145 level. And after testing the 145 level without becoming oversold, small caps broke through their 50 and 200 day moving averages to now test the top of the range. I see resistance at the 160 level and we are now fading from that resistance. Notice that despite the strong surge higher from 145 to about 159, RSI did not become overbought and is now heading lower. Right? If, if we really thought that the IWM was going to break through that resistance area at about the 159, 160 mark, I want to see RSI actually become overbought, especially when it makes a thrust move higher through the moving averages the way it did here. Now, that is not the case. It did not play out. Chicken money flow is bullish. So let's call the indicators mixed solid resistance here. It appears to me that small caps still have some work to do. What would really be encouraging was, would be to see them hold here at the 153 mark and not retest this consolidation from the August time frame. That would be constructive and set the stage for another test, especially if the RSI remains above the 40 to 50 mark. Finally, financials are showing signs of life. Here's the XLF threatening to break to new highs on an absolute basis above the 50 and 200 day moving average as the RSI moves into bullish ranges and check out the downtrend on a relative basis being broken to the upside. So some signs of life here in financials that would be encouraging. That's going to wrap it up for today. Head over to the email. I'll be back here tomorrow.